The intermediate value theorem is a cornerstone of the theory of continuous functions. It says that a function which is continuous on an interval takes any value between any two of its values. Most often this is uh, applied to the situation where the function takes a negative value at some point A, a positive value at some point B, then we can conclude that between A and B there is a point C at which the function takes a value zero. Most common application of this is to showing that certain equations f of x equals zero have solutions. Let us start by recalling earlier considerations. We have seen that if the limit of a function f at some point c is a positive number, then there is a positive number delta such that whenever zero is less than the absolute value of x minus c less than delta, then f of x is positive. Observe that this statement says nothing about the value of f at the point c. That value may very well be negative even if the limit of the function c is positive. Then we define continuity by saying that a function f is continuous at a point c if the limit of the function f at that point exists and agrees with the value of the function. If we now combine this definition with the previous result, we observe that if f is continuous at x equals c and takes a positive value at that point, then there's a number delta, which is positive and has the property that whenever the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then f of x is positive. So here, in comparison to the result quoted regarding positive limits, we have dropped the condition zero less than the absolute value of x minus c. This means that we also allow x to be c. Likewise, if uh, f at c is negative, then there's a positive number delta such that whenever the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then f of x is negative. This follows from the first statement simply by replacing the function f by negative of f. Bolzano's theorem states that if uh, the function f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, a less than b, and if uh, f at a times f at b is negative, then there's a point c between a and b such that f at c is zero. f at a times f at b negative means that the signs of the values of the function f at the endpoints of this interval are different. So either f at a is negative and f at b is positive or the other way around. This theorem is named after the Bohemian mathematician, logician, philosopher and priest Bernard Bolzano who lived from 1781 to 1848. He was a professor at the University of Prague. These considerations have been refined and developed into the state in which they are now presented by the German mathematician Karl Weierstrass, who is widely seen as the father of modern analysis. He lived from 1815 to 1897. He was a professor at the Technical University of Berlin. Bolzano's theorem simply states that a continuous function cannot pass from negative values to positive values without taking the value zero in between. It seems sort of obvious, but if the function is not continuous, then it may jump from negative values to positive values, so a discontinuous function may pass from negative to positive without taking the value zero. Next we prove Bolzano's theorem. The statement is that if f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and if f at a 
times f at b is negative, then there's a number c between a and b such that f at c is zero. For the proof, we first observe that it suffices to prove the result in the case that f at a is negative. If f at a is negative, then f at b is positive by the condition f at a times f at b must be negative. If it turns out that f at a is positive and f at b negative, then we replace f by negative of f. So without loss of generality, we may assume that f at a is negative. We consider the set E consisting of those points x in the interval from a to b, for which f at x is negative. Now we assume that f at a is negative, so a belongs to the set E, therefore the set E is not empty. The set E is bounded, since it's a subset of the closed interval from a to b. Therefore, it has a finite, well-defined supremum, least upper bound C. Clearly, this least upper bound C is between A and B. We now claim that F at C is zero. If we manage to prove this claim, then the proof of the theorem is complete. If f at c is not zero, then it is either positive or negative. If it is positive, then we can find a positive number delta such that whenever the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then f of x is positive. This means that on the interval from c minus delta to c plus delta, the function f takes positive values. This means that no point of the set E lies in this interval, and this also means that c minus delta over 2 is an upper bound of the set E. But this is not possible since c was the least upper bound, so no number less than c can be an upper bound of the set E. And we conclude that f at c cannot be a positive number. All right, so if f at c is negative, then there's a number delta positive such that whenever x minus c is of absolute value less than delta, then f of x is negative. And this means that the function f takes negative values on the interval from c minus delta to c plus delta. Therefore, this open interval belongs to the set E. And this means that C is not an upper bound of E because C plus delta over 2, for example, belongs to the set E. And this is not possible since C was an upper bound of the set E. And therefore, F at C must be zero. So this completes the proof of the claim, and it also completes the proof of the theorem. The intermediate value theorem is now an easy consequence of Bolzano's theorem. It states that if f is a continuous function on the interval from a to b, and t is a number between f at a and f at b, then there's a number c in the interval from a to b such that f at c equals t. To prove this, we apply Bolzano's theorem to the function f at x minus t. Its signs at uh, a and at uh, b are different, therefore we may apply Bolzano's theorem, which says that at some point in the interval from a to b, the function f at x minus t takes a value zero. And at that point, c, f at c is t. Therefore, the proof is complete. This was an easy application of Bolzano's theorem. Graphically, this means that if t is between f at a and f at b, then there's a number c between a and b such that f at c is t. In this case, there are th three choices for the number c, 
we have chosen the middle choice. Here is a typical application of these considerations. Our task is to show that the equation cosine of x equals 2 times x has a solution. There is no direct formula that we could use to solve this equation, so we must resort to other methods. The solution is the following. We first define the function f by setting f of x equals cosine of x minus 2 times x. This function f is continuous. Clearly, the equation cosine of x equals 2 times x is now equivalent to the equation f of x equals 0. So the problem is now to show that the function f takes the value 0. We observe that f at 0 is cosine at 0, which is 1, minus 2 times 0. f at 0 is 1, which is a positive number. f at 1 is cosine at 1 minus 2. This is certainly negative. Therefore, we may use Bolzano's theorem to find uh, a number c between 0 and 1 such that f at c equals 0. Therefore, this equation has a solution. Bolzano's theorem is um, usually used in the form of the intermediate value theorem, with, which states that uh, a continuous function defined on an interval takes any value between any two of its values. A very powerful result in the theory of continuous functions.